can do together some Um, so we want you to this moment where we can interact together um, as we think about this important subject of music. And I have a few points to um, bring as introduction to uh, what I want us to discuss. Um, and um, the first item that I want us to uh, take note of is the fact that um, music is for worship. I'm talking about the Adventist music. The context of our discussion is Adventist music. Now, it goes beyond Christian music all the way to Adventist music is for worship. Now, God created music. Music did not create itself. God created music and he created it for worship. So any other use of music that is contrary to worship is an abuse of the good gift that God has given us. And so I really want us to be reminded and I understand we are all leaders. Uh, they are all leaders here who are leading music. And I want us to be reminded that the music that we are leading is for worship. And when I emphasize worship, maybe it will be understood deeper when I negate it from other usage. Music was not created for business. Music was not created for money making. Music was not created for uh, personal entertainment. Music was created for worship. Now, is it bad to be refreshed by music? No. It can refresh us but refreshment should not me should not be the primary reason for music the primary reason the primary um uh, prompt or the primary thing that prompted the creator of all good things god to create music was for worship now, uh, allow me to read and remind you some few things. First is in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 7. Revelation 14, 7. I really love to remind musicians and myself um with these words saying with a loud voice fear god and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water i read this verse um, I think in Ishaka, in part of our movements here. Uh, there are three commands here in this verse. Two main ones, but there are three. The first commandment in this verse is saying, fear God. Is a kingly 
command. This is the first angel's message. And in this first angel's message, there is a kingly command. And this kingly command is commanding you and me first to fear God. Number two, give glory to him. Um, maybe in the, in the fear God, when we talk about fear God, we are not talking about uh, uh, the, the anxiety, the negative fear. No, we are talking about respect, honor, um, um, re, re, give a special recognition. And this is the, the fear of worship, not a negative fear to someone who is harmful. No, is a fear that is associated with worship. Um, a fear that makes us to put him first. Fear God. Oh, okay. Someone is sharing the screen. If um, we can disable the screen sharing, that can also be something good. I will be sharing screen later, but sorry, some, it's by accident, I, I, I think. Sometimes you can touch the button uh, thinking that you, are, uh, you want to chat and end up sharing the screen. Yeah, so fear God and number two, give glory to, to him. Um, why the hour of judgment has come and it's finishing by saying worship him. So the question of worship is a command that is in the first angel's message. Now, musicians, um, music was created for worship and so it cannot be separated with the preaching of the three angels' messages that began with the first angel message. Now, the issue of worship is a very big issue. Actually, it's the central issue in the great controversy. And my fellow musicians, my fellow musicians, music leaders who are here, the issue of worship, if we discuss music minus the issue of worship, we are misfiring. There are a lot of discussions that are done in the realm of music and they don't consider the issue of worship because there is a danger of many musicians um, getting into the temptation of wanting to be worshiped. And that's a big contradiction Music is there not to worship self. Music is there to worship God. Fear God. Give glory to him. Worship him. And in the book of John chapter 4, in the book of John chapter 4, uh, let's read together verse 24. Jesus is speaking with a Samaritan woman. And Samaritan woman brings discussions on the physical and geographical places of worship. God comes and Jesus comes with these words. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Those who worship God should worship him with those two, spirit and truth. Now, there are a lot of issues that are um, attached with these two formulas. We have seen people who only worship in spirit. They only worship in spirit. Uh, 
meaning to say they they allow ecstasy and excitement and spirit spirit jumping up and down rolling down falling the trousers are falling there the skirts the jackets and they say the spirit is at work they worship god in spirit the spirit 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 is at work um but there are some there's no truth they don't think of truth they don't think of order they don't think of um what god expects his children to do with that they are they are only thinking about the spirit i, I, I don't quench the spirit i'll allow the spirit i i i i i feel the spirit is moving me the spirit the spirit the spirit when you ask that song has how many beats no 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 don't go there that's the spirit when you ask what is the key for that song no 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 the spirit is the spirit the spirit leading don't ask those questions and don't quench the spirit the spirit is leading um when when you want to bring them the science of music uh, they they run quickly to say the spirit is leading but jesus said god is the spirit yes and those who worship him must worship him first in spirit but the second in truth there is also truth not only spirit there is also truth there is order there is order there are manuals there are standards um those constitutes now truth what does the truth of the word of god say about singing not only spirit but there is truth and when we come to truth then we have now the the principles how to compose the song how to come up with a good melody how to come up with a beautiful harmony how to come up with proper rhythm how to we now have the church manual now we we have the standards of singing that is the truth you don't just allow the spirit and forget the truth but there's another extreme of people who only focus on the truth and they forget about the spirit it's only truth it's only principles and they don't allow them the, that music to speak to the heart they this music only speak to the brain so uh, we would say god is saying worship me using not only the intellect but the emotions not only emotion but also intellect and adventists maybe our challenge is the emotion part of it the spirit part of it some of us some of us we are so much into the truth in the principles in the standards in in the laws and we don't go and think what impact this music this song has on people's spirits on people's so it has where we have we have for many modern drivers is experience in driving automatic car they only know accelerator so when accelerator is the spirit that's the only one they will press if accelerator is the truth that's the only one they will press but good drivers they know how to drive the manual car and a good balance of accelerator and 
and crutch will make the car move. And both of them, when they are balanced well, the car will move safely. So we are, we are called to worship God. And in this act of worship, we should worship him in truth and spirit. My friends, again, I want to remind us that the question of worship is very, very crucial because the first two commandments out of 10, they address the issue of worship. Uh, in uh, Exodus chapter 20, from verse one, you have the first two commandments. Fear, the first commandment is commanding us not to have other gods except the creator God. The second is telling us not to make the graven image. No, we are not allowed to do that because of sensitivity of the question of worship. And I'm bringing the two commandments to the music that when musicians are practicing are performing music, they should do that to God only. He is the only God who is supposed to be worshiped. Musicians, you shall have no any other gods before the creator God. This command number one is saying, musicians should pray hard so that they don't follow, fall in the danger of singing for Pastor Mwakalonge and making Pastor Mwakalonge their God. Singing for church members and making church members their God. Singing for any other power that in your brain you are thinking of someone as if is supposed to be the re receptor of that act of worship through music. But even if you say this is not God, but is representing God, commandment number two says, no, I don't need a representation. I am God, don't make anything to represent me. Even if you came to heaven, you saw my face, and you want to make an image that look like me so that <laughs> you can have me there or you can have that image there worshiping true God, but through me, God is saying no. And actually commandment number two, maybe many musicians are breaking it more than any other commandment because we put God's words in our music but actually in our minds, we are worshiping those we see. And we need that discipline. Like what we read in um, the book of Hebrew, and I'll read this, the discipline, this discipline, like what we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, and I request us to consider this is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. Hebrews eleven twenty-seven. 27. By faith, he forsook Egypt. This is Moses. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, he endured as seeing him who is invisible. That discipline of enduring to see God who is invisible should be the prayer of musicians. That I should, when I sing, when I sing, I should see him who is invisible. I should, I should aim for a bigger, Amen from God than even from the immediate audience. 
we should work hard to please God and not to please anyone. When music is for business, then we start to please the customer who is buying our CDs. And that's the one who will try to impress. That's the one who will try to, to get the nod of appreciation. But if our music is aimed at worshiping God, we will strive to get God. My friends, be careful, be very careful fellow musicians of God's small g, G-O-D-S, God's, who are human beings, human gods, so many human gods in the minds of musicians. Let's pray hard, we music leaders, to clean all those human gods to get out of our musicians' um, minds and replace God, the real God. I want to read uh, a, a quote here. I, I want you to allow me to read uh, a very important quote, and I will request if um, you, our, our hosts, will uh, help me to share. Oh, I see I'm on my neighborhood already. And let me do that now. Um, I'm trying to share this quote. Okay, now there's a big issue in music and I'm trying to share with you here. Give me a moment. And then I will share another document in a minute. Yeah. too many documents to be shared and this one is lost here again. Okay, here I am now. I hope we are able to see this. Let me see if I can add the size. Testimonies for the church, page 506. Testimonies for the church, page uh, 506, God's messenger has this to say. Music has occupied the hours which should have been devoted to prayer. Music is the idol which many professed Sabbath-keeping Christians worship. Saturn has no objection to music if he can make that a channel through which to gain access to the minds of the youth. Anything will suit his purpose that will divert the mind, I'm sorry, anything will suit his purpose that will divert the mind from God and he engage the time which should be devoted to his service. He works through the means which will exert the strongest influence to hold the largest numbers in a pleasing infatuation while they are paralyzed by his power. When turned to good account, music is a blessing but it is often made one of Saturn's most effective 
agencies to ensnare souls. When abused, it leads the unconsecrated to pride, to vanity and folly. When allowed to take the place of devotion and prayer, it is a terrible, terrible curse music. Um, friends, may God help us not to uh, allow music to be our idol. Now, having read those few verses, I, I, I want to just quickly um, emphasize some few points and give room for uh, some discussions, some questions and interaction. We, I want to um, remind all of us that um, the first block that forms the foundation of our music practice in the Seventh Adventist Church is the theology of music. And when we say the theology of music, don't be scared by the term theology. It's simply what does God's word says about music, the Bible. Theology means um, the knowledge about God. So uh, does God has anything to say about music? So the church begins there, the foundation, theology. Then once our theology is established, uh, then we have our philosophy. They are very much connected. We have our philosophy and uh, uh, Adventists, we, 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 our philosophy is built on the strong theology, strong theological foundation. And uh, our philosophy is expanding and going to the practice that uh, we experience in our, 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 our our, um, our, our performance. But we have administration. And this administration or the structure is there to make sure the theology and philosophy are maintained. And this is why we have music directors, we have music coordinators in the church, we have um, the, 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 the choir directors, the singing groups, the structure of music in the church, who should sing and how should that, uh, who should sing, sings. So we, 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 we are, we, administration and structure comes to make sure theology and philosophy are maintained. Then we have now the art, the art of music. And the art of music is, another very interesting area. And the art is also influenced by theology, philosophy, and is maintained by the administration. Art is almost the end result of these, the first ones I have mentioned. So I just want to emphasize some few things here by projecting, and I will be sharing the screen again the church manual. The church manual is important because it gives us the, our understanding. This is our understanding as Adventists of the Bible. Um, our understanding grows. And when our understanding grows, then the church manual also changes. Now, then in, in the list of ministries, this, this section of church manual is listing different ministries, the youth ministry, I mean the youth ministry, family ministries, personal ministries. And one of those ministries in page 94, all music leaders shows it. Here we are. And in this uh, page is telling us some bit of structure on how we should appoint 
we are advised how to do that. Um, Thank you for muting. Okay. So how to, 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 to choose? Now I want to emphasize some points here, which we may not have time to say them and I want to take advantage of there. Yeah, I've underlined, I have highlighted. Secular music. Oh, okay. So there is something known as secular music. This um, phrase is introducing something very important. Music is not neutral. There is secular and sacred music. So secular music or that of questionable, questionable nature should never, this very strong statement, never be introduced in our services. So if the song bring, the music bring some <coughs> questions, stop, don't. Another important point here about structure is um, who, 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 who is the chief of music in the local church? Pastor and elders. Those are the chief of music and music leader is under their direction. And we come to selection of musicians. Again, it tells us who should sing. They should be, there you are. They, they should be those members, should be members of church or Sabbath school or Adventist youth ministry from either of those groups. This doesn't mean that you should have all the three, no from either of those three, he, he or she can be allowed to, to, to sing. And there's an issue of dress code, modesty, modesty and decorum. They are very important for musicians. And why? The reason is here, because they occupy conspicuous place You're in the public. You are like pastors, you are Levites. So your dress code needs to be very, very important. What about uh, how many choirs in the church? Um, the church? The church manual say churches may have multiple choirs, not only one. We, it's okay to have multiple choirs, but we keep advising. Some churches are really small and uh, the singers are not that many. So. If you start taking three here, two there, four there, then you, you really don't have a very strong uh, music uh, 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 group. And for small churches, we really encourage to have one choir, but large churches, multiple choirs. And among the multiple choirs, one has been even specifically mentioned, children choir, it is also, one of the church choirs. So that's a very, very important um, section of music. Another section which I wanted us to pay very key attention, and it's talking about music in the church manual, is page 118. So please take note of page 118 of the current church manual. And uh, church manual is our unifying document. If someone is not comfortable with the church manual, then we will have a very fra fragmented church. And that's why when something is in the church manual, we obey and we strive to go by, by it. The power of music. And in the power of music, there are many good things um, written there, but I want to emphasize this, that, uh, our church has never demonized the use of instrumental music. So music inst instruments are okay. We have never demonized that keyboard is evil, guitar is holy, uh, that uh, 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 um, 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 uh, a harp is heavenly, but um, the piano, is devilish. We have not really that theology, we don't have it. We, we have never, never demonized instrument. 
But what we are saying is instruments should be played well, should be played well, and I'll come back to that. Singing with understanding. And by the way, before, before I go there, there's a big problem here uh, that is really bad. Blundering. At other times, those who sing are left to blunder along singing carelessly. Yeah, our, our manual is saying music should have beauty, should have pathos, should have power. And especially when we sing together as congregation, there's a lot of awkwardness in singing. Um, this is quoted from the uh, Testimonies for the Church, uh, volume four, page 71. Let's sing nicely. Let the voices be harmonized well. But in, <laughs> with understanding, we are so much warned to depend on worldly singers. We have evangelistic campaign and for us to attract people to come, let's look for worldly singers. And some of these worldly singers, they mention the name of God, but we know there is no singing in understanding because the question, the question is asked here by Sister White, how, 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 how can those who are You just go to some good musicians. Um, and now here the question comes, is it safe really to invite people from other faith who have refused the key doctrines? They have refused the Sabbath. They have refused uh, eating clean food. They have refused uh, worshiping idols. Is it really, should they really be expected to sing with the spirit and understanding and should we really depend on them? Uh, and the question is, are, are we expecting really the heavenly choirs to join? Are we expecting the heavenly choirs to join that kind of music? If the answer is no, then that music should not be allowed. Now, there's another very important point, congregation singing. Singing should not be only done by choirs, singing group, solos, duet, the, 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 the spirit of prophecy says, as often as possible, let the entire congregation join. As often as possible, let the entire congregation join. Uh, and I will go to the last quote I wanted to share with you today. Uh, that is, remember 94, 118, and I'm finishing with uh, a page 149, uh, just pages to remind ourselves what is expected of us in music. And this is standards of Christian living, standard of Christian living, here we go, there is music. These are major sections in the church manual that are discussing music directly. Music was made made to serve holy purpose, to lift the thoughts to that which is pure, noble, elevating, to awaken in the soul devotion and gratitude to God. That's why music was made, Jesus sang, and we have there, and what is it said about music? Highest hearts. Uh, as a church, we agree that it is highest church, and good music, it will give us pleasure, but it elevates cultures and many, many good things there. But I want us to pay attention to this. We should exercise great care in the choice of music, first in our homes. Many of us are very careful in selecting good music at church, but first 
in our homes. Then in the social gatherings, weddings and what, where people and then in the list churches is the last but many of us are only careful with the churches and the rest of other areas we are not now see the next sentence and a melody now you know when when we read this people i don't know why people they do selective reading this one is saying melody now the song has a melody the song has a rhythm, the song has the harmony. Of course, the tempo is there as well. But this caution, many people replace melody with rhythm. But the problems begins with the melody, any melody, any melody, partaking of the nature of jazz, rock, or related hybrid forms, and unfortunately we put full stop there, the next phrase we forget many times, or any language expressing foolish or trivial sentiments will be shunned. And let me comment on the last statement, when a choir compose the song for the pastor because the pastor rebuked them and corrected them and they do practice for many hours for a song that is directed to a pastor or to an elder uh, you can see the words of the songs they are all directing to some leader Today's pastors, they have no spirit. Today's elders, they don't love others. And you put the music and you put, the, the, those are foolish and trivial sentiments should be shunned because music is not made for any individual. It is for worship. Now, jazz, rock, and related hybrid, these are examples of secular music that we used to have before we knew Jesus Christ. So when we came to Jesus, those should not be part of our music. Let me end up there for today. I've introduced those, uh, some of those issues, but it's important to get some feedback, some questions um, again about the, our theology, our philosophy, um, about about our our administration structure, uh, about about the art, um, and uh, uh, all of this, my friends, is just a reminder. All of these music leaders, please let's go and practice them and make music uh, vibrant in our churches, especially congregation singing, choristers. Please let's make congregation singing a very lovely um, session of worship. Let's be careful to make music done by only few. So um, I don't know if it's Mama Waiswa or Brother Willie uh, who are going to uh, modulate. I already see some hands of people, but I will tell you another good way of doing this because of time you can as well uh, chat, you can as well put on chat. Um, actually, that would be the easiest way. If you have uh, any comment, any question, we will see from the chat and try to, to comment on it. So welcome leaders, uh, uh, Mama Waiswa. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you, my friends. Uh, let's interact now. Elder William, are you there? Elder William Mugera, are you there? 
Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay, you can take us to the question and answer. We would like to thank the pastor so very much by actually making a very simplified presentation that is actually understandable by all. He talked about the theology, he talked about the philosophy, and talked about the administration. I think that has been very, very well handled. I think let's open it up. And uh, as he suggested, we may not have time to, for everybody to ask. If you think that your issue is longer or whatever, please put it in the chat box. Some of us have actually been typing issues into the chat box. But uh, also feel free. Uh, let's have an engagement. If you have a question, uh, please do raise your hand so that we can get one person speaking at a time. Uh, Uh, you are you are you are muted, Brother William. Okay, good. Uh, I was just saying, let's go to our question. So, if you have a question, please raise your hand, and then we can pick it up and uh, you ask. Maybe we'll take maybe two or three questions at a time, depending on how time allows. Thank you. Okay, let's have um, let's have Adonaya. Let's yes. have Adonaya. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm on. Uh, Please go ahead. Yeah, my name is Adonia from Arua. Uh, thanks so much, Pastor, for the guidance you've given, and uh, I really benefited. Now, uh, the first is a question. We realize uh, a lot of uh, pride. In the music lovers, they are too proud, and that one hampers a lot uh, the spirit of the gospel through music. I don't know uh, which answers we ca uh, pastor can give us, or uh, the ways we can tackle the issue of pride among the singers. Then number two, uh, pastor, you've talked about uh, the issue of music at home. I was told of a story when I was in Ginger of uh, a child. Was, to, was asked to present a special item in church and they sang a worldly song. <laughs> it was quite funny. So I encourage all of us uh, to encourage our fellow Christians and us at our homes to make sure that music played at home portrayed the picture of Christianity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, can we have um, uh, Dr. Dan Waswa, followed by Jonathan uh, Matege and Oscar Ogwok. Thank you so much, Elder Mugirwa, and uh, thank you so much, Pastor Mwakalonge. We are so glad and uh, I'm proud of that presentation. I think uh, we did such a kind of uh, uh, presentations or a kind of meetings or seminars uh, uh, as much as, as, as possible. Now, uh, my questions is derived from your presentation, Pastor, and um, you have mentioned that music was created for worship, or the purpose of music for Seventh Day Adventist is for worship, which is which is uh, really right because you've shared the scriptures as well. And then you said music wasn't created for business. Now, my question is: in the context of Ugandan Seventh Day Adventists, musicians or singers? You will know that amongst them, we have songwriters, we have music producers, and we have um, artists or singers. Some of them have qualifications in music and they are seven star Adventists. Now, following your statement that music isn't meant for business, the question is how do talented SDS be able to earn a living from their talent? And if they shouldn't really make money out of this, maybe you may need to unpack what uh, making money is all about, Pastor. Now, relatedly, it is through the sale of uh, music in terms of CDs to sustain the ministry. And we are all aware that the church in Uganda doesn't have enough resources to sustain 
are the music ministry. And you realize that uh, more than 90% of the ministry here is supported by uh, sing, uh, uh, singing groups, if you may say. And you realize that the church choirs that we have can't have or they have not had enough financial support because of the minimal resources we have. Now, if CDs might not be sold, if I've got you right, how do you advise us on the sources of resources that we can use to sustain this ministry? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Waswa. Then let's have Jonathan Matege, and then the pastor will respond to those and we'll take the remaining three. Jonathan Matege, unmute and ask your question, please. Jonathan Matege, I'm going to pass you over. Can we go to Oscar Ogwok? Yes, thank you so much, Pastor, for the information and knowledge that you've given us. Mm, we are talking from Northern Uganda, under Northern Uganda field. I've heard Pastor saying that music is strictly directed for worship and not for any other man. But here is a question that I want to ask. We have a number of church members, like when they come to wedding ceremonies, talk of introduction, you always find that there are songs that are composed in line and attachment to the occasion that is ahead. So my short question is, is it wrong to compose a song and be produced in manner to the wedding occasion as in for the one, for the groom and the bride? Is it wrong for a church member to be done so? Thank you Thank very you. much. Um, Pastor, can we respond to those? Then we'll go to the next round, please. Thank you, my friend. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, actually, it's a blessing uh, when people are asking questions because uh, as you can tell, time is not enough. So sometimes, sometimes seen the good mute yeah thank you uh, you have to you're not yet muted thank you uh, dr Cassinda, would you mute please thank you so um uh, thank you for this First of all, how to pride in, uh, among musicians. You have observed well, my friend, um, and, and uh, leaders. Let's take this. Let's take this seriously. Uh, pride is one of the problems of uh, as music. I'm part of them. And, uh, how to tackle it as leaders. We are leaders here. Let's our musicians to regular devotion. Let's be very keen to make sure we run the devotions. We only made merit pride. Take that pride and that Kadima, please meet Kadima. So the only one power that is able to help us overcome pride and many other sins is um, the blood of Jesus Christ. But I really want to suggest that uh, let's encourage congregational singing. When, when we leave musicians to be um, the only singers in the church, we are really putting them in the temptations of developing that problem of pride. So devotion, let's lead them to devotion. 
but also let's encourage congregation singing so that uh, all are singing, not only few. Um, and thank you for your comment, my friend, concerning the example of the danger of listening to secular music at home. And it came and uh, have effect to the selection of songs that the kid did. Dr. Waswa, you have asked a very, very, very important question. And uh, mm, uh, what I was trying to say is to put the foundation, the, the, the reason for music. That does not say we should not sell CDs. But if our singing, the main purpose of singing is to sell CDs, then something is wrong. So that should not be the main purpose of singing. And the CDs are not only sold for music. Some preachers, they also record and they sell. What about uh, the writers? They write books and then they sell the books. Um, now, it's the, the, the main purpose should really not be to make money, but um, to, 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 to take salvation and to lead people to, to worship. Uh, now, when a musician just come and make music, the, 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 the main um, income generating project, uh, there is a danger there. Uh, there's a very big danger of that musician falling into uh, satisfying those who are going to buy because he or she needs money. When money making is the main purpose of an instrument of worship, then we are in big trouble. And that is together with preaching, the preachers who are very talented and they started charging money for going to preach. And I know some of those. There are preachers who are, there are people who are very good in prayers. When they pray, you get healed. And some of them, they made the prayer ministry income generating uh, project. Again, those also, they, they, they were very, very dangerous uh, people and they did not end well. They really did not end well. So the issue is that should not, not be the main purpose. But if in the course of doing that, there are some income that are coming, then they are not the primary um, sources of income, but they are by the way. Um, so if I will, I will say a very strong statement um, on the question you have asked, I would really, really, really encourage people not to make uh, worship music a source of income. If you want to use your talent and you want to make money out of other types of music, I don't know which type of music, maybe that will come to the next question, uh, then I don't know what will comment about that. But making worship music uh, the main income generating as made so many people go astray. Oscar Ogwok um, has asked a very good question and I have two comments, quick ones again, because of time. One, weddings are worship. So when songs for weddings are sung, weddings are worship services. So we should uh, um, just appreciate or the songs for wedding, the sh songs that brings hope during burial, uh, all those are worship services. That's one way I would uh, respond to your question. But another way, we did not cover that. I just remarked in the quotations I read in the church manual. We have sacred and secular music. 
um, we spend much time to talk about um, music for worship. Now, worship again is very wide term. There are songs we sing to praise Lake Victoria, to praise Liver Nile, to praise our beautiful country of Uganda. There are songs, nice songs, even our national anthems. Those songs cannot be used <laughs> in worship, but they are not necessarily evil. They are secular, but they are not evil songs. We have so many songs that are talking about God. They just play some few examples here. I, I took them. Um, they, they, they talk about God, but really those songs are secular. They are worse than even secular songs. They are only mentioning the name of God, but the melody, the harmony, the the, the rhythm, those uh, uh, the, the, the jazz, the rumba, the reggae, the domboro, and all those things are really secular, although they put the name of God in it. So uh, the absence of the name of God in the song does not make it evil. And the presence of the name of God in the song does not make it sacred. The singing must be done in understanding, melody, rhythm, uh, harmony, uh, and, and the message, the relics, they, they go together not to represent foolish sentiments. So I, I would say there are songs that are praising peace in the family, how fathers should take care of their wives and their children, they are, they, are, they are sung very well. They lift up the spirits and they encourage morals, although they may not be appropriate for church service, but they are not evil. And so um, I don't know the wedding songs you are referring to, but wedding is a good thing. Marriage is uh, something that uh, God himself initiated. Um, that's what I would comment. Uh, Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you very much, Pastor. And I think I'd like to refer everyone back to what we've talked about as uh, the theology, philosophy, as guiding principles for our music. I think we'd like to take uh, very quickly Kiwendo, Elder Mboki Moses, and uh, Elder Kasinde Yostam in that order. I don't think we have time for all of them, but let's try. We'll be very brief, and we we'll see if we can accommodate you. Thank you. Hello, thank you so much. This is Frank. Um, thank you, Pastor, for the presentation. My question, I'm calling from uh, Massachusetts, Boston. My question is, um, does culture play any, any part in the way we praise God and the way we, we, we worship him? Because we have so many churches here. Um, where they uh, the Adventist churches, but when you visit the, that church, they play like the jazz and they beat the drums, and they, they, they that is how they praise God, and it is part of their culture. Uh, some of them are Black American churches, and that is how they praise God. But when you go there, uh, uh, you 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 might feel that they are they are maybe off track but so I, I would like you to uh, just help us to does culture um play any role in the way we praise god thank you your question as which question is clear elam boki my uh elam boki Uh, if he's not, if not very active, let's go to Elder Kasinde. Yosam? Pastor, maybe just, maybe just uh, it looks like people are not 
coming across. Let me just add just one comment from myself. Um, <clears throat> I think for me, we need more of these engagements. And that's one thing that we as musicians in Uganda have agitated for, that the engagement should actually be useful and beneficial. It should actually be able to equip and uh, encourage the musicians to actually do the right thing. So thank you very much for me, a big hands up and I praise God for this session today. Secondly, in the area of administration, I think I'd like to simply like to say, these are just comments, not questions. I would just like to say that the administration of the musicians needs to have the musicians as part of that equation. Because when you actually administer people that you don't speak to, people that you don't interact with, people that you actually don't share with, and you only come to tell them when they're wrong, then I think there is a missing link that we just need to close so that the ministry can actually have the linkages and loopholes closed. And we can have you know, meaningful engagement, meaningful uh, dialogue, and a mean, meaningful uh, ministry at the end of the day. For me, I think those were just comments, but I think we only had one question that came through. Please respond to that, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Very, very nice questions. Um, I, and I was looking on the chat. Uh, and, and looking on the chat, uh, William, I really agree with you that uh, oh, we need many engagements, very important points. I am I'm even trembling that uh, some of those points will not be able to cover. Uh, even after we finish the session. But there are some very important questions that have been asked there and uh, uh, very, very, very important. Uh, but uh, let me comment on, uh, on what has come and I'll see if I'll be able to make some brief comments on some few which are on, on the chat. Um, there is, Oh, let me see who came first. Yeah, you finished with your comment. Uh, this this was uh, Frank Kiwendo. Uh, Brother Frank Kiwendo, thank you so much for connecting from uh, the US. It should be almost a midday for you, I guess. So um, the question you have asked is very important. And in our philosophy, which we have today, our philosophy has, at, 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 I think, nine points. Uh, we, we, well, some of you may have seen it. And this is our, our, our general understanding as Adventists of the music. Uh, okay, someone is, would you please stop sharing the screen? You look handsome, but for now we would love to 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 speak uh, would you stop sharing thank you thank you so much uh, brother um culture is important we cannot ignore culture um we, we, we when when we talk of music culture has a contribution to the music. And if we are very honest to ourselves, to the morals of the culture, we will discover that what is discouraged by the word of God is, courage, is, is also discouraged by so many cultures. But because of sin, these cultures were developed by human beings. They must be filtered by the word of God. Um, the importance of it is the, the, to overcome the sentiments that, um, and in our case, I'm talking in our case, whatever is done in America, then that is heavenly. Or whatever is done by our colonial masters, the British, then that is heavenly. Um, we, we need to overcome that one. But we need to be very careful when we address that thing because if we will ignore completely the blessings 
the blessings that we got from those, I can say, colonial powers, then maybe we would be naked today here. Um, so there are some cultures which were imported uh, from the, those Western cultures. Uh, they found us naked. They taught us how to dress. They taught us how to uh, get what we call civilization um, because of some factors we were the way we were. So there are things we have copied. Um, there are some churches you cannot go without the jacket and tie to the pulpit to preach right here in Africa, because already the tie and the suit have been accommodated in our culture. And we are also, it's, it's, it has become part of our culture also. And the point I'm bringing is culture must be respected when we talk about music. There, is, there, there are some, some innocent elements of culture <coughs> that should not ignored when we make a decision of which should be the good music and which should not be a good music. But my friend, there's, there's a simple formula I use. And this is, we know before we accepted Jesus Christ, and this is the principle, when, when we talk of jazz, rock, um, as my brother here said, about the black American, um, um, system of music, uh, drum, rock, electrical guitar, um, which came and met the emotions because of the maybe slavery they went through. Um, they, they, they have their way of singing, all those who went through those kind of lifestyle, you go to South Africa, you can see the way they are singing uh, liberation songs because of the experiences they went through, you go to black Americans and, and the rest. So um, cultures cannot be demonized. We need really to consider cultures, but they must be filtered by the word of God. And the formula I started saying was, we all know what was happening before we knew Jesus Christ. Before we came to the knowledge of the gospel, we know uh, what we used to live what kind of life we used to live, what kind of music we used to play in, how, how we used to live there when we were in darkness. Um, if you bring that one to the church, then we have a problem. So rock, jazz, they were known that they were a style of music that were fit for certain places and they are known up to now to a certain um, kind of, of music. And when we come from there into Jesus Christ, into salvation, um, and you bring the same kind of music we used to listen when we were drunkard, when we were holding women who were not our wives, when we were fighting, the very same songs, when we come, we, we meet, then, uh, <laughs> then we are in a, in, a, in a big mess. And that formula will help us to decide which song we should use in the church. People, when they come to church, they should not be reminded on the when they were in the darkness. Thank you. Um, we are trying to mute you and you are unmuting. Would you please remain muted? We are trying to mute you. Thank you. Um, you. You have made a very good point, Brother William. We need more engagement. And I have seen some very good um, uh, questions here, which time may not allow us to discuss all of them. But I really wish to mention one thing, I don't know if I'll be able to see it quickly. Um, I don't see it now. Maybe you can continue and in case I see it, I will comment on it. There was a very good point that um, was, 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 was asked and I wish we could also comment on it. Thank you.
thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, very well said. Um, culture is subject to the Bible. And all the other functions that we go to sing for are subject to our theology and our philosophy. Thank you. Very clearly um, articulated. Have other questions uh, or time for other? Uh, we had Elder Mboki who seems to have gone off with a question. Uh, Jonathan Matege, did you ask your question? Uh, I did not. Please I go did ahead. not ask. Mm. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, first one to thank God for this program. Thank you, Pastor Makalonge. Uh, I heard you very well that the business should not be the primary purpose for our music. It should not be the primary, to the extent that one cannot, can even refuse to sing if not given the money, the, 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 the amount of money he wanted. Uh, that one now becomes a problem. My question is, uh, what about uh, this miming? Is it good to mime? Somebody comes with a flash or a CD, puts in the, the, the gundi there, the system, goes to the pulpit, it is a divine service, or even another program, then he pretends that he's singing. Maybe sometimes he, the song is for a choir, he's singing alone, or the song is, is for a man and is a lady singing. Uh, I see, uh, is it good? That's my question. Miming, miming music. Then lastly, what about these uh, gestures? Uh, guest charge music when presenting music how 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 is it in our philosophy or the theology thank you very much god bless you thank you pastor over to you yeah thank you thank you so much uh, maybe before i comment something on on that um uh let let me say something which I was looking for, and this is uh, from Bisase. As Bisase asked about um, this instrument that we have, we have never demonized music instrument. This, this is the question I was looking for. Uh, and the important thing is how to use them. But Bisase observes that um, uh, how would you advise converts who in their previous experience uses these instruments and they were attached to secular setting and would not feel comfortable finding them being played in the church, they feel uncomfortable. Um, so Bisa said that's one of very, very important uh, uh, question. I visited the country of Cameroon and I discovered in, the, in that area we visited, every local church had um, a, a drum. This, these drums, which have the, 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 the animal skin. And I have grown up in the church. I have never, never seen a drum with animal skin in the church. But we went there, they were there, they are big ones, small ones. So when they sing, what a friend we have in Jesus, it's with their drum. What a friend we have in Jesus. And they do their drums and uh, they, they, that's, that's, that's the congregation singing. Um, for, for, for us here, I lived by Lake Nyasa. Those drums with the skin, I lived by Lake, Lake Nyasa in Tanzania. I started ministry there. Those drums, when they are, you know, played, um, they they were calling people for for traditional dances. They were calling them for drinking. They were calling them for for uh, um, sexual immorality. They they were really calling them for all those kind of things. 
So that concern Bisase is very important. And I would love to, again, um, plead with the leaders. Um, local churches differ. One local church differ from another local church. And when we talk about worship and the question of culture, we, one of the points that we emphasize so strongly is um, listen, listen, <laughs> listen to the worshipers. Uh, don't be stubborn. Don't, don't, don't uh, just force your belief we, without listening to uh, the worshipers you are trying to lead. Remember, you are a worship leader. So if the context, you have gone to Cameroon and you have seen them singing like that, you bring the drum uh, like that and you want to play it in a church here, in Kampala, Najanankumbi, or whichever church here. You want to play that drum with the skin uh, of animal because you saw it being played in the Seventh-day Adventist church in, in Cameroon, you are being very, very insensitive. One thing may be acceptable in one place and very much unacceptable in another place. Um, I love giving the example of Papua New Guinea where men are putting on skirts. The, the whole um, head of state who is a man is putting on the skirt and uh, on top, shirt like this and the tie, but bottom, the, no trouser, they put on skirts and it is acceptable for men to put on skirts. So if I come today to preach in your church and I say, you know, Papua New Guinea, they are putting on skirt. I'm also putting on skirt to come and start preaching here in Kampala. You, you can tell that the worshipers will, will find a hard time concentrating, listening to me. So Bisase, that, that is very important. If, if the worshipers are having hard time uh, having some instruments, they know in that area, those instruments are played in, in the area and they are, they, they are dominant there. They dominate worship in those contexts. Uh, obviously, the leaders, the pastors, the elders will advise accordingly and our musicians be humble. Listen, listen to the counsels that the leaders uh, are giving. And now coming to uh, the very good question uh, of my friend Jonathan, uh, Mimi King, we, we, we really encourage people to sing to the Lord uh, and offer to God living uh, sacrifice. Um, Mimi King is not ideal. We, the audience feel cheated and um, you, you, um, there's no even reason why you should do that, a very good reason. Um, I engaged some musicians who said um, sometimes it's, it's because they feel they are few and the voices will not be heard. Uh, they feel that there are not enough microphones and the audience is big, so their voices will not be heard so they had to mimic, they had to play the CD and act there as if they're singing while actually they are not. Um, all of those says there was poor preparation of service. But because we are singing to God, we are not singing to please men. He will accept the offering that you have. If your offering is the voice of three people, Three people can sing very well, very beautiful trio, and it can come out well. If you're only five in the choir of 50, five people can sing very well, even duet can come very, very sweet. 
So it's, it's a matter we can offer to God living uh, sacrifice. So again, we encourage mimicking. We really, we really discourage mimicking in worship. Uh, you can do it when you are recording your video there. You can do it, but don't play a CD uh, in the church. We can, we can watch your CD. We can listen it when we are in our bedroom, when we are in our cars, when we are in the city. But when you come to church, please, please. Offer God living sacrifice. Think of someone, you know, singing is like praying. Think of someone who will record a prayer and come and put it on in the church. How will you feel? Uh, someone sit at home, record the prayer, and uh, he's mimicking as if he's praying. It is the CD praying. What about, because it's worship. I go and record my sermon and when I'm there, I'm just playing with my words, but is someone else is, is, I, is a voice which is playing in the system. And when e e e electricity goes, your voice is also gone. So be very careful. Gestures, it's the matter of um, um, how much, how much is too much, because the preachers will say Jesus is coming and they will show Jesus is coming. But sometimes the singers, they over gesture, we should. I would not advise that we, we uh, uh, make, I don't know gesture because there are some who uh, condemn any movement and I think we'll be going to a dangerous extreme when we, we, we don't want the, 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 the singers to, to, to flow with the song. Uh, I think that will be uh, going to another extreme. But there is also over gesturing. I, I saw some uh, choirs over gesturing until the people now stop listening to the message. You become like a comedist. You you are a crown now. Uh, you know, jumping, falling down, uh, throwing your legs up, uh, your your shoulders, and you know uh, it's. If you're attracting now their attention to yourselves and you are really distracting the flow of the message and may the spirit of God guide us to know what we are supposed to do in the, the right time. Uh, Brother William and Mama Waiswa, the, the need for another forum is seen in the number of comments that we will be forced to close without uh, attending them, but thank you. Thank you so much. Over to you, Brother William. Thank you so very much, Pastor. Thank you, every participant, and thank you especially for those that raised questions. I would, in a very special way, like to thank the Uganda Union and uh, for organizing this and actually making us to be part of this. I've been, in a mini I've been a minister in music for close to 30 years, if not more, and we have not had one engagement that is as rich, as enabling, and as empowering as this. So when you hear the cries of the musicians saying that we need more of this, it's the hungering, it's the thirsting, uh, more, en more enabling, more skills building, more guidance, and... Uh, so forth that will help build the ministry. I appreciate this very much. Thank you, Madam Waiswa. Uh, for me, this is a blessed blessing. I am, I am just over the moon about this. And I believe that I represent more and more of the people in this forum. Um, I think it also calls for a fact that we need to make these engagements, you know, uh, purposeful. Uh, and well planned out and so forth. How I wish that maybe we had, uh, even though we couldn't meet, how I wish that probably maybe we had, we had maybe four or five hours to do this in. I'm sure the people would have stayed on this forum and they would not have quit. But we are happy for this engagement and we're simply saying that a lot more needs to happen to this. Thankful for your wealth of wisdom and the spiritual guidance that you provided for us with the biblical uh, uh, quotations to actually help us internalize and so forth. And to my uh, questioning musicians, I think there you have it. 
that's what we need to do. And I think finally, for me, we would simply like to say, how can we move this forward? And this is especially to you, uh, Madam Waiswa. How can we get the participants on this forum into a network, into uh, some kind of forum that we can actually share regularly and maybe seek out for guidance uh, where, as and when we need it, but we can actually speak to each other from time to time. We can guide each other, reach out to each other, help each other, and keep this momentum going. I think for me, thank you very much. And I would like to return the microphone back to the, uh, to the host so that they can close out uh, us out. But thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mrs. Waiswa. Thank you, Pastor Sentongo and others. And thank you for the large participation from musicians, which shows that they have a hungering and a thirsting for more guidance, more knowledge, more wisdom, more nurturing, and actually more opportunities to minister. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mrs. Waiswa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elder William, for nice. coordinating us in this program. Thank nice. you so much, Pastor Makalonge. Thank you so much, Pastor Makal. Yes, please, Pastor. One minute, one, no, just a second. Just to say, William is a, a very good moderator. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, the, the good work he has done, uh, excellent, polished. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That. Okay. I have, I have copied all the comments, all of them, all of them. I have not left any. I, I have taken them. So uh, all those who gave the comments, uh, even if we did not read them here, we have taken note to yeah. share with Mokwaiswa and plan better for the future. Yes, Pastor, you. you can talk. I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. I am done, Mama Waisa. Go ahead. Mama Waisa, go ahead. Oh, OK. OK, thank you. I just lost, I lost some connectivity. Thank you, Pastor. for such an edifying presentation. Thank you so much. To our participants, we are so grateful. Our leaders who have joined us right from you. Uganda Union from our fields and conference members, our leaders here, everybody who has attended this presentation. We want to thank God for your persistence and God bless you. Surely there is a lot of hunger in, in music ministry. But we want to thank God that we have just begun. We have just begun and uh, we would have done a lot of things since last year, but because of challenges here and there, but now with the new, new technology by God's grace, we will be moving several meetings in the coming month, physical ones, but unfortunately, we are in the lockdown, but it gives us again another opening and way forward to conduct our, our sessions in music. So this is a special announcement to all of us who have attended to, uh, today's session, that one, we will be having many more of these sessions for the rest of the lockdown. That is the good news we are bringing with you with this session today. We will be holding this every Sabbath afternoon from three to five for all the Sabbaths we are in lockdown. I am sure for that. We will be sharing a registration link all across Uganda Union so that we have registered teams of people. We will be sending the Zoom, we will create the WhatsApp group for the union now because I am not in any of the groups, I think. Um, my directors may need to do that. So we will be moving ahead. Pastor Makalonge is here with us and uh, anytime we need him, we'll be contacting him. And I believe by God's grace, he will be able to give us at least some time in our presentation. So I want to thank God. This is the beginning. That is why we, we invited you here today because there's a lot of need and then we'll be moving forward 
right from uh, the other Sabbath. This Sabbath will be having the senior youth will be ending senior youth activities and the following Sabbath will be going in full swing for music and in different topics. We want to thank God that we have a blessing of various experts here in music. Elder William and the elder, uh, so many elders here, they will be helping us a lot in this area as we program so that we don't keep quiet, but we keep learning. And when we are in the lockdown, we need to utilize it fully. So friends, wait for the links. We'll be sharing the links again. directors in the conferences, they'll be sharing with you these registration links, music topics. So thank you, friends. Get these recordings just from the, from the pages we have. Page is online, you can get it, but you can uh, connect with the YouTube, Uganda Union Youth Ministries YouTube and Uganda Union Senior Youth YouTube. We are creating the music YouTube too and all the other uh, social media accounts for the music department at Uganda Union. So God bless you, friends. Thank you so much. You've been a great audience. Thank you, Elder William, for coordinating and the other friends on the group. Thank you, leaders. God bless you. And God let's... bless you too. And God bless this is the mama. Yes, please. God bless you, Mama, for the continent. Amen, amen. Thank you. Before we leave, we will ask Pastor Sentongo Joshua to pray, to give a closing prayer, and then we will be good to leave at leisure. I, uh, Pastor Sentongo Joshua, are you there to give closing prayer? Okay. He's on. Oh, but we cannot get him. Okay. Pastor. We will we will ask. Brother David, David Seru. Okay, Brother David, are you there? Brother Seru Young, I think they are talking to you. You are muted.